Hi guys, John here from Optics Warehouse. So today we're gonna to be looking at a range of scopes for under 100 pound. The reason for this, obviously, with being stuck indoors, sat at home, you might be getting a bit bored, and you might have an old gun in the back of your gun cabinet, or in the loft, back of your wardrobe, somewhere hidden away, that you thought, oh, you know what, I'd like to have a go with that, but I haven't got anything to stick on it, or your sight's broken, or it just need a little bit of modernizing, and something to get you going in the garden. So we're gonna go through these, have a quick roundup of each one, and all these will be suitable or perfectly suitable for use in your back garden and even for dispatching quarry at short ranges. So to start with, let's go for the Valiant 4x32. So it's mill dot reticle on this one. The mill dots are quite spaced apart. So realistically for your air gun ranges and shooting at them distances, you're only gonna use the one above and the one below as rough markers. I don't think you're really gonna be going much further than that. So it's front focus curve comes down to 10 meters and goes out to infinity you've got your flip up covers on here which is a nice feature of a scope at this price and also on the turrets they are dialable but they're not reset to zero so obviously don't try and look for a way to set it to zero once you're there as a marker just sit zero in and forget about it and obviously you only need to touch it if you knock it or knock the gun so it's illuminated on these models it's the whole reticle that illuminates and it's one color red illumination so obviously on the full settings on this, as with most cheaper scopes for illumination, it does come a bit of a glare. So you're probably gonna to wanna to turn it down a few from the top. All the scopes here today as well, we're on a one inch tube. So it's gonna be quite easy to mount. You may even have some mounts stuck away in the back of your toolbox or gun cabinet, or if not, they're very cheap and easy to get a hold of. So that rounds up the four by 32. So we're gonna move on to the next scope from Valiant today. And this is the three to nine by 40. So once again, you've got front focus on here from 10 meters. You've got the same style turrets. Once again, not ideal, but perfectly adequate for plinking in the back garden. And a nice, easy to turn magnification ring with three to nine magnification on there. And the same mill dot reticle. Same problem is going to apply to this as the four mag, but it does make it a little bit easier to use on a nine. Being second focal plane, obviously that increases the size of the image, which means the first and second mill dots on there may come into play. Same flip up covers and hidden behind here, which I forgot to mention in the first one, is your fast focus eye relief there, which is quite easy to turn with a thumb and a finger. There's quite a big extension of movement on there, so you should be able to get that image nice and clear for the reticle on your target as well. So that sums up the Valiant 3 to 9 by 40. So we'll pop that one down here and we're going to move on to the Hawks next. So to start with here, we've got Hawks offering the same sort of style scope as the Valiant there, which is a four by 32 with front focus, but this time you've got cap turrets. Now, personally, I prefer the cap turrets on there because you can't knock it. And also, once you take that off with the extremely long thread, you then have your quite simple turret there. Although you've not got any markers on there to tell you where you are, the good part of this is, as I say, it is capped. So once you're zeroed, you're not gonna have to worry about knocking it or moving that around. So we'll just quickly pop that one back up. Once again, fast focus eye adjustment on there. And it's got a rubber grip part around the outside. So it makes it that bit easier just to turn. This one here has got a mill dot reticle. These do come in either mill dot or duplex. Obviously at that sort of range, I would still suggest a mill dot, although it's not gonna to be too much difference if you're used to a duplex reticle and you're just sort of aiming slightly above or slightly below what you're aiming at, depending on the range. So obviously that's Hawk's offering. We're then gonna go up in the range on Hawk, slightly larger model now. This is the four to 12 by 40. Once again, it's front focus and it's got the same style turrets on there. Underneath, although you've gone up in, in magnification on the scope, you do get the same style turrets because it is more of a budget scope. But as I say, that shouldn't be too much of an issue for what you're looking to do. Obviously going up to 12 mag, that does mean that the mill dot reticle that comes in there is a lot easier to use. So you will be able to use the mill dot above and mill dot below on most ranges because of it enlarging the image on 12 mag. Once again, this isn't illuminated and based on a one inch tube. So that quickly rounds up the Vantage 4 to 12 by 40. We're now gonna move on to the Nico Sterling 3 to 9 to 50 Mount Master. Now the good thing about these, it's got everything you need to get up and running straight away. So you've got the mounts of it, you've got your front focus, you've got the illumination, and the reticle on these are a half mil dot. So the benefit of the half mil dot reticle with use an air rifle at them ranges 
is when you're shooting below your zero point and aiming past your zero point, you then have to hold over and hold under. The half mil dot sections on this do come in very, very handy for being able to judge that and is a very, very good way of referencing where you need to aim. So this once again has the rubber protection part on the back for your ocular adjustment and a nailed section for easy adjustment. You've got your magnification ring there, once again nailed, and then your front focus here. Being a 50 mil, theoretically it allows a lot more lighting, but because once again, these are of the lower end of the budget of scopes, that doesn't tend to make much difference between the 30 mil and the 50 mil on here between the scopes we've got. It literally just is one, ease of use, a bit easier to grab the 50 mil objective for your parallax than it is to grab the smaller 30 foot, 32 mil. So with this one as well, just as we've mentioned on the other ones, under here, you've got cap turrets, and this is the old style with an easy finger twist. So that's very easy to use, but once again, non-resettable. So that rounds up the five scopes that we've got here for your back garden plinking. What we've also got in front is a small array of mounts that you may need to use for obviously getting your zero, bearing in mind these are 30 mil, but you can get inch versions, very similar mounts. They're adjustable. A lot of old rifles now, they do struggle with a bit of barrel droop. So obviously old springers, brake barrel, you're cocking them constantly, putting that pressure on. You may need to shim or use adjustable mounts to get that zero. If you don't, don't need that and your rifle's fine and you've got no issues with that, you can then go for the standard style mounts here, depending on the heights needed. Obviously, being a one inch tube, and a 32 mil, you're generally not gonna to need to put it on high mounts like this because it's gonna be so high, your cheek's just not gonna be anywhere near the cheek piece. If you use the Springer and you're worrying that the two piece mounts aren't gonna be enough, then you could also go for one like this, which once again from Hawk, at quite an affordable price, just to give you that peace of mind. So that's a quick rundown of five under 100 pound scopes to get you up and running with your back garden plinking. If you've got any more questions, please feel free to drop us an email or give us a call. Thanks for watching.